I get the sick and suspicion. We're just not, we're not gonna make it. Where did you find this idea? In love with this place. We're finishing up our enchiladas and then we're hitting the road. If you can see me sweating, it's because the enchiladas are so hot. And it's a good thing. <laughs> Angela makes the best enchiladas in the world. And this is a particularly good batch. So I'm on my second helping of that. We wanted to make sure that our bellies were full so we're not driving on an empty stomach and cranky or hangry. We're gonna finish up our little bite to eat here, drag these slides in, and we're gonna hit the highway. Yay, let's go. I'm in love, in love with this place. One, the staff, I just enjoyed her a lot. Oh my goodness, this place is so adorable. This is in Wisconsin. Headed out to Dubuque, Iowa. We're at our first stop today and it's raining. It's raining, it's thundering, there's some lightning in the vicinity, so we're hoping we can wait this out for about 30 minutes. Good news is this first stop we can do in the rain. So we're gonna check out Fenelon Place Elevator Company. This is supposed to be the world's shortest and steepest scenic railway. It looks pretty cool. I can see from the bottom all the way to the top from here. It's $2 an adult for a one-way trip. If you just want to go to the top, if you want a round trip, which is what we're going to do, it's $4. So this is a cheap, cheap little thrill. A very slow roller coaster with no seat belts and no safety features. <laughs> Moves around, the thing comes off the rails. It's gonna be a bad day. <laughs> he sure rocks around a lot of that much. So there's one downfall, and that's that this thing is slanted on the track, and that's right. <laughs> Like I get the sneak and suspicion, we're just not, we're not going to make it. <laughs> I mean, this thing, <laughs> where did you find this idea? story short, if the guy that lived in the top of this hill in the 1800s used to have to take his horse and buggy like a 35 minute ride around to get to work every day. So when he'd come home for his lunch break, by the time he made the long drive, he didn't have enough time to eat lunch. So he commissioned the county to build this in 1882 and it went on It had some, it burned a few times and by the time it burned the first time, the citizens of the area were so reliant on it to cut their travel time to work in school, they banded together, rebuilt it, and they started charging five cents a ride. Later on, it burned again during a recession and they couldn't afford to rebuild, so they became uh, the railroad company here. And they had to go up to 10 cents a ride. And then it talks about later on, someone else bought it and they went to a Chicago train expedition and got a, got a DC motor and came back with a cable car motor to pull it up and down the hill. It originally only had one track and when it would burn, it would burn through the cable ropes and it would go sliding down to the bottom and usually destroy a house wherever it decided to hit at. So they went to steel ropes and 
Anyway, it's been rebuilt two or three times, but people actually used it to cut about 30 minutes off their transit time to downtown Dubuque uh, versus taking a horse and buggy. So, and there's a neat reason why they did it, and now they just kind of keep it going. So that's pretty cool. This was fun. When it would catch on fire, it burned the rope, and it would just launch the car down here to a house that used to be at the bottom and destroy the house along with it. Very cool. Yeah, this was fun. This, this was all the because, All because somebody wanted to have a little more time on his lunch break to actually eat and not spend it all on the horse and buggy. <laughs> so he'd ride right here, hop on, have his, have someone pull him up, eat lunch and ride back down. That's kind of neat. This was worth the drive. Originally erected in 1873, atop a building on Main Street, the 13-ton clock tower was moved to the plaza in 1971. Also in the heart of town, the old Dubuque County Jail was built in 1857. There was a two-story square section that provided living quarters for the sheriff's family, and then there were three tiers of cells located along the eastern wall with the catwalk. A cell block in the basement was used to hold Confederate prisoners during the Civil War, and then later, troublesome prisoners. So we managed to beat the rain for a minute. We only got sprinkled on, so now we're down here, still in Dubuque, kind of checking out the Riverwalk area, looking at the old shot tower. They call it a shot tower, but it's actually a drop tower dates back to the 1760s. Since that was invented, these things are all around the world. This one was built in 1856 and produced lead shot until 1881 when it became a fire lookout. They melt the lead down into liquid, then it's poured through a copper gate, which ensures it's all the same size. And as it falls, the lead droplets become spears because of the surface tension. And it lets it cool before it lands in the water below, which finishes the cooling process. It lets the lead shot keep its shape. That's kind of interesting. I never knew that was, I never knew this was a thing. Some cool barges going on behind us and it actually kind of got to be a little bit peaceful out here. The wind pretty much stopped and it got kind of nice. This is pretty. It makes me feel like I'm a little castle. It's your own personal castle. The Julian Dubuque Monument stands on the edge of the bluff above Catfish Creek in the Mines of Spain Recreation Area. This area was used during the Indian French fur trading culture. It was here that Dubuque founded the first Euro-American settlement in what is now Iowa. The moth saga continues. I just walked out of the camper and I was gonna pull my awning down just to adjust the pitch a little bit. And when I did it, there's dead moths all inside the awning. So hopefully you guys can see this because it, it's just gonna be a never ending deal. That's what between three and nine moth corpses look like. I've already shaken a few of them out. I'm gonna try to get the rest of these out real quick. Bug sprays my new perfume. These black gnats are killing me. When we first got to the campground, I told you that I was in absolute love with this place. I've determined 
that this is my favorite campground. Now we've been at some really nice ones, but this is my favorite. So we failed to let you guys know where we're at. We're actually at the Rustic Barn Campground in Keeler, Wisconsin. Yes. The views that you get, it's very peaceful. Quiet. The, it, it's been very nice. And this apparently is a kind of a vacation spot because during the week it's pretty quiet. The weekends it's a lot busier. And we barely got in, right? Yeah, I think we wanted to stay a week to get the discount. And I, and when we got here, there wasn't a ton of campers here, but they're like, yeah, this was Friday afternoon. They're like, we have what, 35 or 40 more campers coming in Friday night. Yeah. And it got and it did. packed. Yeah. Friday through Sunday, it got packed. It's Monday morning. Still a lot of people here, but a few people hitching up to leave out. It's a great campsite. It's beautiful. The landscaping is incredible. The sites are very nice, full hookups. And with the week discount, I think we came in at like 48 bucks a night. So oh. you can't beat the pricing there. We paid a lot more for a lot less. They do have laundry on site and a lot of games and things like that. The laundry room isn't very big, but it's only $1.50 to wash and dry. So that's super cheap. It's a big deal. They have a really nice rec room library there's some spacing between campers you have this nice huge area to walk the dogs or just get Play away frisbee or run around hey, let the kids run around or yeah you've got a beautiful landscape and farms all around you you've got some holstein cows and a nice farm over here it's just it's just nice to watch it's very relaxing and peaceful here it works out really good. It may sound really quiet, but we're probably three minutes away from a main highway and only about 12 minutes away from Dubuque, Iowa, where is the nearest big city and they have everything you could need to get while you're here. So yeah. preparation's minimal, the price is right, and it's just incredible. Something else they have here is this adorable little chapel. It's a true chapel open 24 seven and it's adorable. I thought that was just a really sweet mm -hmm. little touch. Yeah, the people in the store are very friendly and nice. I mean, really, if you're coming through Wisconsin, if you're coming through the Dubuque, Iowa area, this is a must stay, whether you can stop for a day or a week, this place is really, really nice. You almost don't wanna leave, but we have been out adventuring some. So that's a wrap on this one. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.